$10,000. That's how much jazz pianist Eddie Moore received last year from the Charlotte Street Foundation for winning their Generative Artist Award. Right away, he started using it to take his band The Outer Circle on tour. In fact, they just got back from playing some dates in New York City. Eddie's a proud proponent of the Kansas City jazz tradition, but not one to stay stuck in the past. When I sit down and write, I kind of just come to the table with like a clean slate. I'll be like, oh, I didn't like that. I like the first two. Okay. And that could be like a whole tune for me. You know, you just start to hear and piece things together. And then I'll come at it like a jazz, like, okay, well, I could take this and like split it up like this and then maybe like format some things. Welcome to the musical mind of Eddie Moore. Piano player since the age of four, Eddie grew up in Houston, graduated from Texas Southern, then headed to UMKC in 2010 to get his master's with Bobby Watson and start soaking up as much jazz as possible. I went to the Blue Room session and I was just like blown away. You know, all my friends, that, that people that are now my friends, just seeing them, like, play like that. Kansas City Jam Sessions, I think, are, like, some of the best in the world. Like, the camaraderie is still there, you know, like, but it's still, like, pretty serious. And potentially pretty intimidating. Unless, like more, your other youthful passion involved skateboards and rollerblades. We were doing that at a time where skate parks weren't um, popular. So we were finding spots at office buildings. When you grow up with that life, you're not really afraid to get hurt if you're jumping off buildings and, <laughs> you know. And even when I play, like, I'm kind of the instigator to where, like, okay, well, I know that this is what it says to do, but I'm gonna do this and this and this and see what everyone does. Some people might get mad and be like, hey man, like don't do that. And then you, you live and you learn. <laughs> the life of a modern jazz man calls for making music in many configurations. Thus you might find Eddie Moore all over the keyboards with Project H. taking an even rockier road with the band Various Blog. This particular night finds him in a considerably more traditional mode, leading a trio upstairs at the Kill Devil Club. It's got a baby Graham he loves to get his hands on. You know, when I hear jazz now, I'm not really listening to what someone's playing like for the notes. You know, you're playing to the tendencies of your personality. You're communicating with these other gentlemen how you would maybe communicate verbally. I try to go for a lot of melodicism and like lyricism. I'm not really a virtuosic player. I mean, not that I, oh, I don't have chops, but just Trying to play things that I hear and stay true to that, and then being able to hear more and more and more. I've been really paying attention to telling a bigger story. That might start off like in a solo, like introducing yourself to the audience orally, like maybe you want to come in burning, <laughs> but that'd be like us meeting for the first time, like, hey Randy, how you doing? And then you're like, man, this dude is crazy, you know opposed to, like, a normal conversation. But here's the gig this piano man finds most fulfilling. For the last year or so, the tank room on Grand has been an outlet for his band, The Outer Circle, playing for an audience that's open to strains of R&B and even hip hop that slip into their musical mix. Jazz can never stay the same. It just, I've always just understood that it's the music of its time period, which is why there's so many different forms of jazz. But we're all rhythm section players, so there's no horn, there's no vocals, there's no one that I have to like guide. So it works out pretty well. <laughs> 
The Outer Circle released its third recording last fall. To the kinds of positive reviews that also greeted the first two, including praise for their debut from the Jazz Bible Downbeat. But finding places around town to play the music has proven elusive, especially after Take Five Coffee and Bar in Leewood closed last year. Seems the city's most visible jazz venues just aren't booking this brand of improvisation. I'm not hard-headed, but we are playing jazz, and so I do think, especially as an African-American, it's like, this is rebel music. What works for me might not work for someone else. But I kind of refuse to hear that, like, people don't want to hear this, or there's not an audience for this, or like, at the end of the day, that means that money can't be made off this. We're jazz musicians, so like, none of us got into this business to be rich. Like, that's not even... And so um, I just kind of find what works for me, man. And that inevitably leads to this question. What's next for Eddie Moore? Will Houston's loss become our long-term game? Or is Kansas City just a jumping off point on his way to greener pastures? I think the goal is to like figure out a way to stay here, but be all over. One would say you'd need to travel, blow up somewhere else to have respect of home. A lot of us are traveling, and a lot of, I think that's important. Just reading about the history of Kansas City, they were doing residencies with groups where like a Kansas City group would go to the East Coast for two weeks, and then an East Coast group would like have a residency in Kansas City. You think about what that does for the scene and the listener, it's like, oh, now they get to hear like all this crazy music in their living room. That's the thing, I don't really want to move. I'll just do whatever that's best for me, but the goal is to stay here. 